Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It is Monday, May 9th, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Welcome, Robert Marr, our VP of Investment. Good morning, David. Good morning. So let's talk about GDP, the economy, inflation, the labor markets, and remember, it's not a 30-minute show. I will try to remember that, David. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, last There's week- There's so much to talk about. <laughs> there is. Uh, last week, we did talk about GDP, and that's really is a beautiful dovetail to what we want to focus on today, which is productivity. Um, so l last week, you know, GDP came in at a negative 1.4%, and, you know, I, that took me back as it did quite a few other people. Um, and then uh, we found out a reason why productivity went down, or I'm sorry, GDP went down, and that's because of productivity. We saw going down, going down yeah. by 7.5%. So uh, productivity is a huge contributing factor to GDP. Um, so with that decline in productivity, that was kind of an oh, okay moment for the reason why we had the poor GDP number. And the measurement of productivity is basically how much output you have for what you have to spend to get it per unit or per... Yes. Um, you know, usually when you hear about productivity, it's a ratio of output to input. Um, so they're two types, you know, there's labor productivity, pretty simple, um, what's produced per unit hour, um, but then there's multi-factor productivity, and that's the one that the uh, Bureau of Labor S Statistics usually focuses on, and that's uh, the real output, real meaning inflation adjusted, adjusted for inflation, um, from private businesses, uh, and their um, inputs are unit and capital. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so... What does that look like right now? It's obviously gone down or it's less. Do we have an explanation for that? Two major metrics, let's say, um, for reason, for, are the reasons productivity um, went down 7.5%. Number one, in the first quarter of 2022, um, 1.7 million new workers entered the workforce. Okay. So, you know, by definition, newer workers, um, mostly in the leisure entertainment services uh, industry, um, you know, are by definition the least productive. Um, you, know, you have to train them, get them up to speed, et cetera, and then hopefully they become more productive. So, number one, all the new, new workers coming into the economy. Number two, um, another metric that came out the same day as the productivity numbers are the unit labor costs. They skyrocketed 11.6%. So oh, okay. let, let's there take a step back from all the numbers and you know what, 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 what does that mean? Um, so if you're putting in 11 or businesses, private businesses are putting in an additional 11.6% to for unit labor costs, basically wage inflation, what have spent. a payroll. Um, so you're, those workers, ideally, to keep productivity consistent, have to produce 11.6% more goods or more output. And they're not. And they're not. Um, so, it's the other know, way. It's, it's, many times it is the other way, exactly. Um, so with the wage inflation, with the unit um, labor inputs going up 11.6%, that really dragged down productivity as well. Okay, so, so the, we have a whole bunch of new workers yep. who are being paid a lot more, who are a lot less productive because they're new. Exactly. Okay. Well, I've got a wonderful example. Okay, yeah. I have two daughters that are, um, they are starting summer jobs. They just got hired and both of them have some experience, but they still have to learn the ropes at the new position. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, and the interesting thing about um, productivity is, you know, if we look back at the 1980s, we had uh, Japan, one of the largest economies in the world at that time, well, even still today, but especially in the 1980s, uh, but they only have a fraction of the population that the United States had. Um, of course, China, and China was in a much different place in the right. 1980s. Um, but you had a, a country with a population of about 100, 110 million people with one of the largest economies in the world. So productivity is a very important component to GDP. Um, but the good news is, hopefully, um, these 1.7 million new workers become more productive and hopefully um, not only 
because we have to remember productivity uh, is a unit of time. It comes out quarterly. But you also look at the trend in productivity growth. And if our economy is going to expand or continue expanding after detracting, um, we need that productivity numbers to expand sure. and have be on an upward trend. So, you know, if we can get to that point, that's great. So where are we in terms of the expectations for the um, contraction this next quarter as it relates to this, these numbers for productivity? That's not going to help. No, it's not going to help at all. Well, these numbers are for first quarter. Okay. So second quarter is, you know, it, we're still writing that chapter as we speak. Um, but as we have more inflation numbers coming out uh, this week, I believe. Um, so it really depends on how much of um, price increases business are businesses are going to be witnessing over the next few months, and we'll see if that's going to be even worse or better for second quarter. So we, we'll wait and see how those numbers turn out. Well, and all of it comes down to the consumer. The cons you know, businesses may say we've got to raise prices because we have higher wages, other input costs, but then we also have um, the fact that the, the businesses are going to set those prices to still obviously hopefully make a profit for the business owners, be it you know, a small business or for a very large corporation. Um, and so ultimately the consumer is going to pay the bill. Exactly. Those those businesses are going to pass the costs along to the consumer, and those costs include paying their workers more and paying for those inputs, those raw materials to produce those goods, and businesses are paying more for both. So here's a key takeaway question. Um, how much of all of this is already priced into where the market is today? What kind of impact can we expect or what does it look like? What are we, what are we seeing as, you know, how this is kind of already built into the market pricing? That's an excellent question. And um, let me, let's go back last week for me to answer that question. When the Federal Reserve raised rates by what we expected, half a percent, um, <laughs> He came, Jerome Powell, the numbers came out at 2 o'clock and Jerome Powell spoke at 2.30. The market, you saw a sharp increase. The markets, you know, blew everybody away. Because they, they were, were expecting awesome. more. They were, well, they were expecting more, but at the same time, like, they okay, got what they expected. Done. And right. also, Jerome Powell, um, a lot of people won't agree with me, but he, he came he came across as very dovish. Um, but then again, what happened the next day? The next day, people kind of scratched their heads and said, wait a minute, the inflation game, right. um, this isn't over, and the markets plummeted. So when you say how much is priced in, um, I don't think market participants even know that. Right. Um, I, I would like to think that a lot is priced in right. and that we've seen the worst of it. Well, and let's, be before we, we let go here, real quick, let's talk about you know, what happened last week where we saw the markets fall off a little bit. And I, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to use words like plummet, uh, you know, fell through the floor. These are all things that I know right. are exciting, but also we hear in the broader media. And, you know, what did we see for the, the, the Dow? Was it off maybe 5% one day? Right. But that was after it shot up 3, 3.5% three right. the previous day. Of So um, all in all, the markets didn't do all that bad last week. Okay. So right. yeah. that, there, there's the key. Right. Because it's very easy to get caught up in, well, you know, there's not as much discussion, of course, as you very well know, Robert, about the market was up two, three, four percent. That gets some attention. But what really gets the attention is yes. um, is the the fall off the five percent drop. What is it? When it bleeds, it leads. Yes. So that's a little <laughs> bit what we see when you see the market hemorrhaging. Um, another way of putting it, then we'll see a lot more conversation about that. So just keep that in mind as we see things unfold. Exactly. Okay. Good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, we will be sure to come back with more for you with another Holland Financial Report to help you plan stronger.